Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. In today's video I'm setting up my first ever bowl aquarium. I know some people are not a huge fan of fish bowls, but personally I think they're okay as long as you just set them up properly and choose the right inhabitants. I'm thinking some small shrimp and maybe even some small fish as well. Should be good fun, let's get started. So I've been thinking of doing a bowl aquarium for quite a while now and then a couple of weeks ago I went to my local garden center It's actually the same garden center where I also bought the XXL vase and they had these massive fish bowls Now at the time I couldn't take it home, I was just on my bike so I didn't have a way to transport it So I just took a picture and then I did a little poll on Instagram just to kind of see what you guys think about me setting up a bowl aquarium and to my surprise about 85% of the people voted yes so did not expect that at all but yeah then I went back a few days ago see if they still had those bowls Still had them, so I took it home, and now we're here. Look at the size of this thing, guys. This is literally the biggest fish bowl I've ever seen. But I know you guys want some numbers, so let me just grab my measurement tape. Okay, so the opening on top is 30 centimeters or like 11 and a half inches and maybe it's easiest to measure the width on the inside so let's like put it there and then go away right here that's i would say like 45 centimeters yeah like just over 17 inches and then let's do the height as well and that is um, i would say 41 centimeters and that's like 16 inches so I'm not very good at math, but I think that comes down to like a total volume of like roughly 50 liters, which is like 12, 13 US gallons. So yeah, that's the bowl. Let's get to work. First thing I want to add is a little foam leveling mat on the bottom of the bowl. Okay, format is done. Next thing we need is a light. And we have light. Now don't pay attention to the setup, this is just temporarily because I don't feel too comfortable with clamping it on the edge of the glass. The glass is quite thin, so I'm gonna find a different solution for that. Um, but the light itself is very nice. We have the Prime Fresh Water from Aqua Illumination. Uh, full transparency, this light was sponsored, didn't pay for it. I got it from the guys from Bulk Reef Supply, so shout out to them. Um, yeah, I heard very good stories about these lights, never tried them myself, but yeah, very curious to test them out. Now the plan is to go for a no filter style setup. So besides the light, we don't need any other equipment for this bowl. Which means that we can move straight onto the substrate. Now whenever I'm making a no filter style setup, I like to go for quite a thick substrate layer. So I'm using two different products. First we have a layer of crushed lava rock. This is very porous, which will then um, be a great home for all those beneficial bacteria. On top of that, I'm going to add a nice layer of aquasol. Uh, this time I'm using the soil from dental plants, full of nutrients, which should give, should give us some really good plant growth. Okay, substrate layer done, nice and easy. We have a slightly thinner layer in front and then we have a nice kind of a slope towards the back. So should look very good. So we can now move on to our hardscape. Now because we're going for a no filter style aquarium, I want to make sure we leave plenty of space for plants because plants are very important. They will take care of making the aquarium stable, keeping those nitrates low and just helping to reduce algae. So I'm going to go for a very simple hardscape. I have two pieces of uh, spider wood. I've actually already used these ones before. So there's some moss on there and there's some glue on there, but 
it's no big deal. And then I also have three um, black lava rocks. It's not the regular black lava rock, these are a little bit more interesting with a little bit more character to them, but yeah, that's the hardscape materials. Here we go, hardscape done, super simple, literally took like five minutes or so. I placed both pieces of wood together, uh, sort of like in the center, so we have like a little island style composition. Three rocks around it, that's it, all done. I'm sure you guys know what's coming next. These two pieces of wood, they're definitely gonna float. So let's glue them to the rocks. Okay, hardscape is nice and secure. We can do a little test. Yeah, nothing is moving anymore, so that's good. So that means we can now move on to planting. And guys, I told you I was gonna use a lot of plants, and I wasn't joking. We have a lot of plants to work with. Of course, as always, from uh, straight from Daniel Plants, they've been uh, supporting the channel for a long time, so huge shout out to them. So I'm just quickly preparing all the plants for planting and I wanted to take a little moment and show you guys this uh, crypt right here, the Crypt Lucens. As you can see this one is really really big right now. Uh, looks good but if you plant it like this in the bowl it's just going to look a little bit silly. Also underwater it will probably stay a lot more compact so what I'm going to do, take it out of the pot and then just kind of like split the rock one half or just remove as much as possible. We can clean a little bit in some lukewarm water. So just like so most of the roots are now clean. And then I'm actually going to cut off all of the leaves. So just like, just like so. Looks a little bit brutal, but uh, now this plant will just have a much easier time to convert inside the cram. And it will grow a lot more compact. It will just look much better. You can also like, kind of like split it into smaller portions. So now we have like three nice portions of crypt uh, lucens. Look at this beautiful tababus. That looks so good. One even has a flower. This is the Pygmea Bukit Kalam. I think it used to be called Green Wavy or something, but probably one of the easiest boots there is. Okay, plants are all prepared. And I've also just spent a few minutes making a little planting map. So I basically grab all the labels and I place them in the bowl in a position where I think they will look best. Kind of just uh, yeah, shuffle things around for a little bit until I found the best position for each plant. I also wanted to mention that, okay, I'm using quite a lot of plants and if you want to create a bowl like this yourself, like you don't have to use this many plants. Like the only reason I'm using so many plants is just to, so I can show you guys an end result within like three, four weeks, you know, like normally I plant a tank and then I release the video like a month later or so. So this kind of just helps to yeah, speed up the process a little bit. Here we go, all done with planting. It's looking good. It's looking packed as well. Like we've used a lot of plants in here. But yeah, fingers crossed, everything's gonna go well. All the plants will start growing properly. And then hopefully in like three, four weeks from now, we're gonna have a nice lush green aquascape or a fishbowl or whatever you wanna call it. You guys are obviously gonna see that in a few minutes from now, but I still have to wait a little bit longer.
So two months have passed and the bowl has developed really well. The plants looking super lush and there's little to no algae. It hasn't been a completely smooth journey though, because after two weeks quite a few plants started to melt. This is completely my own fault. I used a lot of aquasol and aquasol will release some ammonia in the beginning. So it's important to do frequent water changes to keep the levels low. I'm pretty sure if I would have done a few more water changes, the melting could have been avoided. After the plants stopped melting and the water parameters were good, I added in a large group of red cherry shrimp. And they did an amazing job cleaning up the bowl. Besides the cherry shrimp, there's also two amano shrimp in here. And a few days ago, I added in four sparkling gouramis. The sparkling gouramis are one of my favorite nano fish. And if you've never kept them before, I highly recommend you set up a little tank for these guys. You might have also noticed a few dots cruising around the tank and they are seed shrimp. These tiny creatures always appear out of nowhere, but they're actually quite useful because they basically feed on waste organics. One thing I absolutely love about no filter aquariums is how well you can see the plants photosynthesize. Especially when the light has been on for a few hours, this bowl basically turns into club soda. So yeah, really happy with this XXL bowl aquarium. Hope you guys like it as well. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.